So uh, welcome to everyone who just joined. Uh, otherwise, everyone's going to hear the same speech from me. Uh, so this is the uh, last but not least presentation in the Data Plus poster session for this track. We've got Data Plus Group 5 AI in the investment office. I've had a chance to spy on some of this work before, and it's really, really neat. So they're same format as before. They're going to talk between five and 10 minutes. If you all have questions then, just please put them in the chat. After the presentation's over, don't be shy. Unmute yourself, ask questions, put them in the chat as you will. Uh, and then we'll wrap up uh, about 3.25. So go ahead and take it away. Awesome. So I could, we could probably get started. Um, so just an introduction. We are the team, um, Project 25, and we're called AI in the Investment Office. Our project manager is Yi Wang from uh, Duke Fuqua. And our team members consist of Helen, Lucas, Priya, Justin, and Alice. And so maybe just like a really quick introduction into our work this summer. So we worked with DUMAC and DUMAC was formed in 1989 as a separate nonprofit support corporation. And they have four main investors of Duke University, Duke Health, Duke Retirement Plan and the Duke Endowment, which um, leads to about $19 billion in assets under management. And so um, they were the primary, um, the organization that we work with this summer and we use artificial intelligence tools and also data visualizations to support Dumax investment analysis and cost optimization. I think something that was really unique about our project is that um, as opposed to like one research assignment, we were really split up into two main projects that we worked on this summer. So I think today we'll be giving an overview of our first project on cost optimization and the second on venture analysis. And then we'll be talking briefly on our next steps as we'll be hopefully partnering with Dumac in the fall. Yeah, uh, I can kick us off on project one. So as Helen was saying, Dumac basically gave us the option of a few different projects. Uh, basically tools that they wanted us to create to help them kind of every day. So one of the things that DUMAC does consistently is they have these financing charges based on where they have uh, investments. So basically they have short positions at many different banks uh, called prime brokers, basically just do dealings for DUMAC. And depending on how much actual cash they have, as opposed to these short values, they might pay fees, they may actually get paid a certain amount of money to have that extra cash there. So basically we needed to come up with a way to propose transfers to save DMAC the most amount of money each day, um, at least projected savings for the year. And this is something they would do uh, every single day and it would take them like an hour. They'd look at the Excel sheet they gave us and they would try and like kind of do guess and check uh, with informed guessing to figure out what these best trades were. But we were kind of tasked with automating this process, and we were able to do so using a Python tool. Um, so if anyone wants to jump in and explain kind of the two different types of transfers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say something about that. So uh, basically, uh, we, do, we do two types of transfers. The first one is uh, mandatory transfer, because like uh, GMAC has a margin requirement at, at, at each PP they invested. So uh, at each day, they want to keep the margin at least about 5%. So uh, basically, we provide the mandatory margin transfers to cover that. We, we propose transfers that no money between uh, PBs that will bring the margin there to about 10%. 10, 10 and we also do the optional cost optimization transfers. So these, transfer, these transfers we provide will save GMAC like millions of dollars every every day I, I, I suppose uh, so like in the left corner we have like a sample output of our Python file because uh, the space is limited here so we only uh, screenshot a little bit so you can see at first we provide like the mandatory transfers that will cover the margin and also the natural day cash and we also have provide like top five scenario of the cost optimization transfers. We, uh, we only have scenario one here because the space is limited. Then we, we also have like 15 independent transfers that uh, we will provide for DUMAC to choose. So to expand on this a little bit, every day DUMAC, instead of going through this whole process and just looking at where their finances are kind of allocated, they can just input the Excel sheet into the code, run it through their command line, and in about 
five, 10 seconds, they'll have this output, which will give them, as Lucas was saying, those mandatory margin transfers and then these cost optimization scenarios to, to you know, get savings. And if you can see that, it's a little small on the bottom left, but there are days where the savings can be, you know, potentially upwards of, you know, $500,000 or a million dollars, which is a lot. Um, and it's dependent on them actually doing those transfers. But, uh, and those are also projected over the year. So that assumes rates stay the same, which is obviously not true. But they, they've told us they've been using this. We basically finished this about four, five weeks in. Um, and they've been running it and using it as a kind of base for what transfers they ultimately end up doing. Um, so we're happy they're using it and getting some benefit from it. Yeah, and one example for like, we had uh, spreadsheets that they used like in previous days that we used to like test their code and stuff like that. And a transfer that they did a mandatory transfer to cover their margins or keep them above 10%, it actually cost them 70,000. But if we, if they ran our code, then it would, I think it would save them about 400,000. So it was pretty beneficial yeah, it's like also to use really, our program. Oops, sorry. Yeah, it's also really simple to use in that they just have to, um, like for example, right now we've actually made some changes so that they would have like all of these files for the different dates in a folder and they could just like run it very easily and they get the output um, straight into the folder that Dumac already has built in their system. Yeah, it is a very interesting problem to do basically front like start to finish like they just presented us with something they were doing and we kind of automated the whole process and then at the end the tail end of it which we've been kind of working on now and we just finished up is kind of integrating it into their existing code bank uh and making sure that you know it fits in with how their other code is written that they've done prior to us working there so we had to make some changes but it's definitely been a good learning experience yeah, as for our second project, we work on venture analysis. Uh, so essentially, like the basic task was to use the Burgess and the Pitchbook data to calculate the length of investments that Duma has made in the past 20 years based on initial investment data and the dollar rated realizations of a company over time. So essentially, like once we compiled all the data, we used um, we use that data to create visualizations to help Duma analysts and understand and analyze past investments and provide like another historical data point to aid the future investment analysis process. Yeah, and just like some background information about PitchBook and Burgess, they all provide a lot of like data analysts. They're essentially a market data like platform that provides uh, different investors with a lot of like private market data on each of the companies and the funds. And so we primarily pull that information from there. Um, and the techniques that we use included web scraping, which is extraction of data from websites for age and investment series. We got this from PitchBook and we consulted consolidated the data using Python scripts and Excel. And then we utilized Tableau to consolidate the uh, Burgess data and the data scraped off the internet to create appropriate visualizations. And so we analyzed a, like a variety of different factors um, through our visualizations. Some of them including like series data, looking at the industry, looking at um, the length of investment um, frequency, as well as um, numerous other factors that we can definitely uh, go into more detail with our um, Tableau visualizations. But overall, it was a pretty like interesting project in that we were able to use like web scraping, use Tableau. And this was pretty different from our first project, which, which is a lot more coding based. But this was really great to um, understand and like use the data, do web like um, like web scraping, as well as data cleaning, wrangling, and then using the better data into putting Excel and then using Tableau to make the final visualizations. Yeah. Because we had to, in the previous project, we were kind of just given this pretty consistent, pretty well constructed like data set. Um, but then in this one, we kind of had to, we, web scraping was a little bit inconsistent. It depended upon the website, depending on the accuracy of the information they gave us. Um, and there were like 8,000 companies. So that started to become, you know, like you have 60% of them, 70% of them. So there was a lot of like making sure the data matched up, making sure we include, you know, the most accurate results. So a lot of that was really good practice and definitely, you know, honed our skills and the best ways to do that, um, the best ways to visualize the data. Because if you try and uh, do the visualizations, work with Tableau without cleaning the data first or kind of working with it, you don't really get accurate visualizations. You don't really get results you want. So it's definitely good practice. Yeah, so after working on these two projects the past 10 weeks, 
Um, our team is actually looking to continue our relationship with DUMAG and work on other projects that they may have. Um, the next one that's coming up is an interlink project, which is actually like kind of a database where they have a lot of files and stuff like that. And we're just working on um, downloading, downloading files automatically and like sorting them and stuff like that. So that'll be our next project. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. We also have some visualizations on the poster and then a few other ones in reserve. Uh, if you wanna see those, we couldn't fit them all on uh, the poster. Thank you all. It was a great way to end off our session. Uh, and you know, I said this during your second talk, but whenever you can say our client is already using something that we're doing during the project, that's a big deal. And it's clear they wanna keep working with you. So that's, that's an A plus. Uh, Folks have questions. Uh, you want to show us some of the background stuff, the stuff you had you couldn't show? Yeah, for sure. Um, let me just pull that up. We can actually probably show this in Tableau because we just created a story that we can also share. Um, let me just set that up real quick. Um, so we had a lot of different visualizations, so I'll probably sum up some of the most important ones. Um, okay. If we are to take a look at this one, for example, we can take a look at the average length of investment by industry, including the write offs So from here, we can, for example, see that investments in materials and healthcare is much longer than investments in like real estate and financials, for example. And so this is looking at all the fully realized companies. Um, and then this visualization is very similar, but ex excluding write-offs. So um, we're only looking at fully realized companies where the other one was like write-offs. So fully written off companies as well as fully realized companies. Um, we also took a look at it in a box plot to see like the range of length of investment, for example. So like for healthcare, we see that it's almost like 16 years for the range. And so that can show that the company is performing either very well and staying afloat or doing pretty poorly. But for real estate, for example, we see a much smaller spread. So that can, that can probably show, give us a more accurate estimation about like for a company in real estate, about how long the investment might be. Um, other one things we, yes. You know, I'll jump in real fast. One of, the, one of the things that is important to note about the second project is because DUMAC deals with like the endowment, the retirement plan, uh, Duke Health, the money, like they need to understand like when they make these kind of private investments, they're trying to get an understanding of kind of how long they expect to be in that investment. And they're trying to get a better sense of, you know, if we put this into this, this sector, or we you know, invest in a company that's one year old or 10 years old, are we going to get it back in the next three years, in the next five years, seven years? Because with a large sum of money that they also just sort of need to have somewhat accessible, they just want to have a better sense of, you know, not locking themselves into investments and then not getting the money back for a long time. So that's why a lot of these have to deal with length of investment and, you know, the age of the company and looking at kind of like the ranges because that understanding is something that was important to them for this. Definitely. And other things that we looked at were like the age of uh, the average length versus status of investments. So whether it's fully realized, fully written off, we also looked at different regions because GMAG invests in like India, Southeast Asia, North America, China, and Korea. So we're able to look at some of those factors um, as well as like the age of company and the average return on investment. Although we do have um, these graphs both, both updated on our actual Tableau. This was from like a few days ago. But we also took a look at like length of investment by region and status to look at like the different ranges in terms of fully realized, fully written off for all the regions that DUMAC invests in, um, as well as like the length of investments in terms of a histogram, looking at the percentage of companies um, which are invested um, and have like an age, like a length of a certain number of years where length is essentially the number of years that DUMAC has invested in a company for. 
Um, I know I'm going through this pretty quickly, but we also looked at uh, the investment year versus a length of investment to see if there are any trends from about 1993 up until now. Um, so the data set we used was they basically provided us with financial information from every quarter from 1990, like December 1999 to this March. So a lot of what we did, we, we had to use Excel pretty extensively, but all also, we used Python scripts to 80 of these spreadsheets. We, you know, had to do calculations on those. So it was definitely good practice in, you know, coming up with a problem, coming up with like what parameters and kind of just like a very basic goal that needs to be done and then using either Python or other tools to do so. So I think it was interesting because I think sometimes we, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a decision to find out what the best move was, uh, one where you wouldn't make mistakes, but you also could do it relatively quickly because it was a large data set and a lot of different Excel sheets with, you know, a hundred columns, some of which are irrelevant. You don't need the other ones being, you know, important. You need to isolate those. So it was kind of a mixture of reproducible steps, Python scripts, we were, which we were able to give to do Mac. So if they wanted to do this kind of thing in the future, they probably could uh, as well as some things we needed to kind of one off transformations as well. Yeah, and I think since we're running a bit low on time, I'll maybe just show one or two more. So mm -hmm. on our actual Tableau, we also looked at the length of investment by different series. So we provided in different um, formats. And something else that we actually looked at pretty recently was looking at, um, like for unrealized investments, what's the average age plus the length of investment for unrealized companies from um, 2000 to 2019. So we did a time series. Um, and that pretty much wraps up all the types of visualizations um, that we did this summer. All right, very thorough. Uh, if folks have questions, please put them in the chat. I guess the, the other thing I would ask, and this is, this is maybe dramatically unfair, but uh, how how prevalent are these tools in the industry? Or I guess the industry is really things like Dumac. Uh, are you sort of like introducing it for the first time? Is this, uh, is, are there sort of, are they exploring this so they can then decide what to purchase? Like, is this, I don't, I don't know how many things there are like Dumac, because I mean, obviously people do day trading, but like, and use very fancy tools, but like how, was there something to compare to some other university doing something different or is this very novel? Um, I think the use of like these Python tools and like kind of software stuff to, to do analysis and to like make recommendations is definitely like a trend. Like a lot of places are doing that. I think, you know, if you look at like a bigger bank, mm -hmm. uh, like a bigger financial firm, they have people who are like, that whole their whole job is to do this and they have like 30 of those people and they make like really sophisticated tools there's also companies that there were one or two projects that they mentioned to us that they basically said like you know you guys could work on this or we could get someone else maybe to we could hire and pay like a ton of money to do so it's there are like definitely ways of doing these things but you know it, a lot of it's time saving a lot of it's, it's like that first project we were doing it in a way that was more consistent and was probably finding a more optimal transfer than they might find just by looking at it, right. but it was something they were kind of doing anyway. Um, so I think the use of it is becoming more prevalent. And they have like a base of like Python files and other kinds of files that they're using for other things. I just think, you know, they're, they're not as big as a lot of, I mean, for endowments and, and stuff, they're decent size, but in terms of financial firms, no, that makes sense. Any questions other folks have? I think otherwise, uh, I think we can end it here uh, as we're going towards 3.30. Uh, thank you all, this is really great stuff. And uh, thanks everyone for coming to the Data Plus poster session. Uh, I think that concludes it. So hope to see you all in the fall if you're coming back to Duke uh, or you know, online in the fall. 
And uh, thank you all so much. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.